So today we will be focusing mainly on the categorization part of the adverse drug reactions and as said before you need to share, subscribe as well as like this channel to get the certificate of the pharmacovigilance program which is being launched by your channel and you have to watch the entire video as well. So this will be considered as the second topic of our pharmacovigilance program. No, now so categorization adverse drug effects can be categorized into various subcategories. The first one is side effects. So side effects are one unwanted but Often unavoidable pharmacodynamic effects that occur at therapeutic doses. This can be predicted, predicted from the pharmacological profile of a drug and are known to occur in a given percent of a drug experience. So, reduction in dose generally reduces the symptoms. A side effect may be based on the same action as the therapeutic effect. So, side effect is basically some effect which a drug produces when you just consume a drug or medication. then we have a one target. Medication is intended to produce one pharmacological effect. We are taking a medication for one effect only, but the medication could simultaneously produce some other effects that can be harmful as well as good. So, side effect is nothing but the effect which a medication produces apart from the desired effect. So, a side effect may be based on the same action as the therapeutic effect. For example, atropine is used in pre anesthetic medications for its anti secretory actions. The same action produces dryness of mouth as a side effect. Side effect may also be based on different facet of action, like estrogens cause nausea, which is unrelated to the anti ovulatory actions. An effect may be therapeutic in one context, but side effect in another context. Example, codeine used for car produces constipation as a side effect, but the latter it is therapeutic or is beneficial in travelers' diarrhea. So, side effect is not necessarily the side effect has to be harmful. Side effect can be beneficial as well. So, the definitions which I will be saying today, the categorization, the definitions of these terms are basically very important, especially these are important while doing major coding in pharmacology. So, these terms are very closely related and at the same time, it is very important to distinguish these terms as it will help in producing or giving the current, the correct code. Now, Next comes the secondary effects. These are the indirect consequences of the primary action of the drug. In some pill, suppression of bacterial flora by tetracycline paves the way for superinfections. Corticosteroids weaken host defense mechanism so that latent tuberculosis gets activated. Next come the toxic effects. So, these are basically due to the excessive pharmacological action of a drug or due to overdose. So, when a drug is taken at an excessive amount or it is used for a prolonged period of time, then drug can be accumulated or it may lead to produce adverse consequences. Excessive amount of drug is not fruitful for us. It may lead to drug poisoning as well. Overdose may be absolute, that can be accidental, homicidal, or suicidal, which is intentional otherwise, or relative, that is, usual dose of agentamycin in presence of renal failure. So, in renal failure, our kidney function usually alters, slows down. So, gentamicin will produce adverse effect or it will produce toxic effect as it will not be expected. The effects are predictable and dose rated basically. 
poisoning may result from large doses of drugs because it is the dose which distinguishes a drug from a poison. So difference between poison and poisoning is this one. Poison is a substance which endangers the life by severely affecting one or more vital functions. Next comes intolerance. It is the appearance of a characteristic toxic effect of a drug in an individual at therapeutic doses. It is the converse of tolerance and indicates a low threshold of the individual to the action of a drug. So what happens when a drug is continuously taken or at a therapeutic dose, at normal therapy, for example, paracetamol 500, is the normal therapeutic dose is 500 or 650. So if the adult consumes say paracetamol at a normal dose and if some, some person, some people, it may happen that a toxic effect is getting the pro is getting accumulated of the patient is having some toxic effect due to the parasitoma. So it is it continuously happens and that means the patient is not getting accustomed to the effect of the parasitoma. So he is getting intolerant to the parasitoma. So, which is due to the low threshold of the individual to the action of a drug. So, it may vary from person to person. For example, a few doses of carbamazepine may cause ataxia in some children. Next comes idiosyncrasy. It is genetically this idiosyncrasy we have already seen in our previous classifications of adverse drug reaction, that is, ABCD classification inquired the type is that this type of one using the type that means it is generally it's different totally unpredictable the mechanism of this is exactly not known why it happens and why what is the basis of the mechanism of such effects this is totally unknown it varies from person to person and the mechanism is totally different. This genetically determined abnormal reactivity to a chemical, the drug interacts with some unique features of the individual, not found in majority of subjects and produces the uncharacteristic reactions. As such, the type of reaction is restricted to individuals with a particular genotype one. In addition, certain bizarre drug effects due to peculiarities of an individual for which no definite genotype has been described are included among idiosyncratic reactions. Next comes drug allergy. So, it is a immunologic, immunologically mediated reaction producing stereotype symptoms which are related to the pharmacodynamic profile of the drug generally occur even with much smaller doses and have a different type of of onset and duration. So, allergy is also some sort of adverse reaction but it is related to the, our immunity system. Some immune complex reactions of us and due to which, even at a very small dose, some patient may exert or this may have this effect. This is also known as drug hypersensitivity. Next comes photosensitivity. So, again, I am saying the definitions are very important for the purpose of NEDRA and for the purpose of understanding the ICSR forms, which we will discuss later in our later sessions. So, photosensitivity, it is a photo means light and sensitivity means some sort of sensitization due to light, means someone who has having problem due to light, light when a drug is administered, means the adverse event is getting exemplified or getting manifested due to the effect of light on taking a drug. It is cutaneous reaction resulting from drug induced sensitization of the skin to UV radiation. The reactions are basically of two types, phototoxic. Drug or its in which the drug or its metabolite accumulates in the skin, absorbs light and undergoes a photochemical reaction followed by a photobiological reaction, which could be enema, edema, or the sort of skin rashes, etc. And photoallergy slightly different drug or its metabolite induces a cell mediated immune response. So some immune complex reactions are activated, which on exposure to light of a longer wavelength. 
to 100 nanometer wavelength produces a peculiar odd azimuthus contact dermatitis like this. So, allergy is basically immune based and this one is due to accumulation of metabolite and getting activated into the sunlight. Now, drug dependence, this one is also very important and the subcategoric terms, the different various dependencies are closely related. So, drug dependence is a state in which the use of the drug for personal self. This patient is accorded a higher priority than other basic things. So, you are using a particular medication or particular drug as your as per your own because you want to take without you don't have any motto or any goal to take that medication or to produce any therapeutic effect, but you will only produce some sort of enjoyment or some sort of relaxation. For that purpose, you are continuously taking the drug and once and at a time the term will come when you will just exist for that drug and you will be completely your life will completely dependent on the drug that is known as drug practice in short so these are the various types psychological dependence which is said to be developed when the individual believes that optimal state of well-being is aging only through the actions of the drug this is mainly seen in case of some anxiety medication, depression medication, psychological medications. Then physical dependence is an altered physiological state produced by repeated administration of a drug, which continues the necessities, the continued presence of the drug to maintain physiological equilibrium related to our physiology, physiological system. Discontinuation leads to the withdrawal reactions. So, withdrawal reactions also we have seen before in our previous topic. You can also refer to our previous adverse drug reaction part 1 for getting the definition of withdrawal reactions. And drug abuse refers to the use of a drug by self medication in a manner and among that deviates from the approved medical and social pattern in human culture at a given time. Drug addiction is a pattern of compulsive drug use characterized by overwhelming involvement in the use of a drug. Whereas drug habituation denotes less intensive involvement with the drug so that its withdrawal produces only mild discomfort. So, difference between addiction and habituation is that between habituation is not as that severe as compared to addiction. It is a less intensive, it involves less intensive involvement with the drug or more or less the particular definition is same. So again, another drug withdrawal reaction, apart from drugs that are usually recognized as producing dependence, sudden interruption of therapy with certain other drugs also results in adverse consequences, mostly in the form of worsening of clinical condition for which the drug was being used. Example, frequency of seizure may increase with sudden withdrawal of an activity. So, gradual withdrawal can be effective. Gradual withdrawal is the always preferable. Don't go for immediate withdrawal. So, the perspective of including drug withdrawal reaction separately is that in the previous subcategory, we have seen drug withdrawal reaction under the perspective, under the eye of producing dependence. So, but in here, what it is saying that certain interruption of therapy with a certain other drugs, not necessarily that has to be addictive, addicting drug, but which produces dependence, but certain other drugs also, which are these drugs are not addict. They don't produce any sort of addiction or that, or any sort of apps. But if if then also you are withdrawing the drug. Still, the drug will lead to some adverse consequences with the body physiology. It will not produce any sort of addiction, but it will also produce, but it will produce some sort of physiological abnormalities. So, 
that's seed about drug withdrawal reaction then comes teratogenicity so it's got the uh, fetal development of autistic it causes to kind of congenital anomalies it is refers to the capacity of a drug to cause fetal abnormalities when administered to the pregnant one so the placenta does not strictly constitute a barrier and any drug can cross it to a greater or lesser extent so as we all know the blood brain barrier is also present in our head on our brain so that is a sensitive barrier and lot of modifications are required with the drug molecules so that drug may selectively cross the blood brain barrier and there is also another barrier as we all know blood placenta barrier so which is a very sensitive barrier and drug may cause this placenta as some of the drugs like many of the drugs cross the placenta and if the drug crosses the placenta then it may produce abnormality in the developing child which develops in the womb of the mother and as a result various congenital anomalies are produced the focumilia incident due to associated with halitoma is also as due to this phenomenon of teratogenesis and this focumilia incident has caused a mass evolution which led to the concept of the emergence of the pharmacovigilance concept so pharmacovigilance concept was introduced due to lot of factors one of the biggest factor was teratogenicity problem of the pocomelia incident so now to the next category mutagenicity and carcinogenicity so carcinogenicity as the name suggests it will cause cancer some activation of cells which may lead to cancers activation of proton codons strong codons that's why and mutagenicity it refers to the capacity of a drug to cause genetic defects and cancer respectively so mutagenicity is for genetic defects and carcinogenicity is for cancer usually different mechanisms are involved so one is oxidation oxidation of drugs result in the pollution production of reactive intermediates sometimes free radicals are also produced which may affect genes and may cause structural changes structural malfunctions in the chromosomes covalent interactions with dna can modify it to induce mutations which may manifest as heritable defect in the next generation in the modified dna sequence code for a factors that regulate cell proliferation or code that are proto-oncogenes for the proteins that in the transcription of proto-oncogenes a tumor or a cancer may be produced so next come the drug induced diseases this is the last category and the end of this topic adverse drug reaction these are also known as iatrogenic agents or iatrogenic diseases and the functional disturbances or diseases caused by drugs which persist even after the drug has been withdrawn and largely eliminated so certain effects even the drug is withdrawn the effect to the adverse effect will be it will not be completely eliminated so isoniazide may cause hepatitis and it will be permanent actually so that's all for today and thanks for listening to this chapter this topic and hope you have enjoyed the video and if you have any doubts you can just be in the comment and please don't forget to like share and subscribe our channel thank you bye